How would you describe a country where life unfolds in low quality? What for you makes a country undesirable or in other words intolerable? Is it the poor economy, the honking noises and neglected cities or having to endure a culture you are unfamiliar with? Imagine a country where all of these aspects we mentioned are present and in excess. A place where poverty, chaos, overpopulation, strenuous jobs and unhygienic conditions run rampant. This is Bangladesh, a planet-sized country covering approximately 150,000 square kilometers, accommodating a staggering 170 million registered individuals in an uncontrolled manner. Due to excessive population, people work as the world's cheapest labor force. You will be surprised to see the factories of the world's largest brands here. They export a product with a similar fabric to Europe, putting a Zara label on it and, at the same factory, stamp their local brand's label on another product of equal quality to market it in Bangladesh. On the other hand, shipping companies taking advantage of cheap labour in the country dismantle their scrapped ships on the poor people here, colouring Bangladesh's seas with chemicals. Yes, these are the desperate workers who work for just $100 a month for a whole month living in poverty. In this video, we will try to understand how people in Bangladesh strive to survive under such difficult conditions. Geographically, Bangladesh is located in South Asia, where many people may hesitate to set foot. This is because the country is right next to India, and South Asia has a vast population. Therefore, if the number of fun situations in that country is low, or if people can learn about the culture of that geography in other ways, foreigners do not step into that country. Bangladesh is one of these countries. Foreigners cannot comfortably explore this country, encountering people at every step. For example, in the capital Dhaka, officially a city with a population of 15 million, the eyes of all local people are on you as soon as you land. Although they are incredibly cheerful and friendly, after a while you become tired of excessive attention and want to escape. Especially blonde or fair-skinned individuals stand out significantly in Bangladesh. This is Dhaka, the ninth most populous city in the world. When you take a bird's eye view, you'll see that this city occupies only 306 square kilometers. In other words, it has a relatively small area for a capital city. Because of this, as soon as you step into Bangladesh, you'll be greeted with incessant honking noises and witness accidents happening at every step. For instance, there are bicycle tuk-tuks in traffic, and these tuk-tuks often block traffic flow. If you happen to ride these tuk-tuks with two people, it becomes even more challenging for the person riding the bicycle to pull you and the cars behind you honk even more to clear the way. There is also a situation that I recommend you not to take deep breaths during your stay in Bangladesh. Remember, I didn't say to breathe, I said not to breathe. This is because in 2019, the country set a record by being recognized as the country with the worst air quality in the world. As you might guess, the following countries are on the list, India and Pakistan. The main reason for Bangladesh's inferior air quality is the significantly higher population per unit area compared to India and Pakistan, and consequently, more motor vehicles. If you've decided to embark on a journey that may take up to 24 hours with layovers from one end of the world to Bangladesh after the trip, one of the most iconic places you can visit in the city is Parliament House. Whether the story is known or not, this palace immediately catches the attention of those who come. The reason is its pink appearance. This place is originally from the years when the British exploited Bangladesh. Bangladesh could not gain independence until 1971 and establish a proper government until 1991 because there were millions of British supporters of Indian origin in the country. Even today, while some Pakistanis see Bangladesh as their own people, nationalist groups in India see both Pakistan and Bangladesh territories as part of India. 
So just like in any part of the world, things are complicated in that geography and there are some disputes between neighbouring countries. During the British era, they exploited those lands, left in 1947, and then fueled conflicts among the people. That's why this Parliament building, a legacy from those days, has been converted into a museum. The palace is located near the Buriganga River in the capital, Dhaka. This river is used to take tourists on boat rides and serves as a place where local vendors transport goods with boats without dealing with road traffic. Let's assume that you are already accustomed to a crowded city environment. Now, you cannot trust the food you eat. They tend to consume highly spicy and as hot as possible. Red chili powder is used in almost everything. Even if the environment is clean, you end up ingesting a meal that doesn't look very healthy for your stomach. Later, when you go back to the hotel in the evening, fires can ignite inside your stomach. However, if you are in Bangladesh and must eat something, you should try biryani. When you look at this dish from the outside, it resembles Uzbek pilafs with meat. Roughly defined, it contains various spices, large grain rice and whole pieces of meat. Some may add vegetables to it. This is essentially a dish specific to South Asian Muslims and they do not use pork as meat. What adds flavor to the dish is that the chefs in Bangladesh serve it with their bare hands as much as possible. There are no gloves and they don't mind whether their hands touch the food. In fact, many people eat it with their hands without using a spoon. If you've gone to that country, I recommend eating it without overthinking the details and moving on. Now, let me take you to a concrete example of cheap labor in Bangladesh. Zara, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Burberry, Prada and many more. Almost every major brand you can think of has a factory in this country. Most of you love these brands and if their products fit your budget, you buy them without hesitation. But have you ever considered where and under what conditions these clothes are made? This is a large factory where Bangladeshi workers work. Everyone is working like a machine. This factory, which looks like this outside, is where Zara exports its globally trendy products to countries. So most of the Zara branded products you wear reach you through a Bangladeshi worker's hands. In 2016, Bangladesh gained significant momentum in the cheap labor sector and became the world's second most preferred country after China. Global brands accelerated their investments in this country and created employment with cheap labor in Bangladesh. Before 2016, Bangladesh was also active in the sector, but many factory owners ignored job safety, causing constant worker losses in the country. There's been another horrific incident at a garment factory in Bangladesh. Officials discovered cracks in the building yesterday, but workers say they had no choice but to go in. These incidents were reflected in the world press and foreign investors hesitated to invest in the country. Nowadays, the Bangladeshi government holds the situation more tightly. Their goal is to be able to compete directly with China within the next 50 years. Even now, the country's annual return on foreign investments amounts to $34 billion. There are 1,029 factories in the country and each factory employs more than 10,000 people. In these factories, there is an exciting situation where products from different brands are produced on each floor. For example, suppose a floor has products for the American Eagle brand with the same fabric on another floor. In that case, similar products with different labels are produced for the local people of Bangladesh. Brands different, but the products are the same. When these brands sell products to you, they are selling their names rather than the quality. The factory arrangement in Bangladesh is the most significant indicator of this. Unfortunately, not every person seeking a living in Bangladesh can work in clean environments like clothing factories. For example, one of the heaviest workloads in the country belongs to the profession called shipbreaker. Bangladesh is a country with a connection to the sea in the south. Therefore, ship companies have their jobs done in coastal countries where labor is $100 to $150. The biggest reasons for the unhealthy air and sea in the area are these factory wastes. Breaking a ship here reveals dozens of chemical emissions and debris. This place is just one of the world's most extensive ship graveyard workshops. These workshops look precisely like this from space, and hundreds of ships are waiting in line to be dismantled. The city of Chittagong houses the largest shipyards in Bangladesh. 
Figuratively speaking, there are no fish in the port of this city. Workers do not need to explain how heavy their job is because everything is apparent on their faces. They constantly breathe lousy air in their environment and carry heavy irons on their backs. In probably 20 years, their bodies will have largely collapsed. These Bangladeshi workers have no choice but to disregard their lives. If they refuse this job, companies can find a replacement for them in just one day. Because there are about 20 million unemployed people in the country. Although it may seem nice that the Bangladeshi government supports foreign investment and creates employment for its people, the coastal cities and the country's air are entirely covered with metal waste. Today, shipbuilders say that an average ship has a lifespan of 25 years. So sailing in open waters is hazardous for any ship that has completed 25 years. Therefore, ship or ship-owning companies send their boats that have completed 20 years to countries like Bangladesh for demolition. The steel and iron released from these ships are then returned to their countries and reused in shipbuilding. Interest in these dismantling companies in Bangladesh is so high that each company employs more than 100,000 workers. The average time allowed for the complete destruction of a ship is around six months. Huge ships are wholly demolished by Bangladeshi workers within six months. In conclusion, a person born in Bangladesh starts life economically and in terms of quality of life a few zeros behind. They work in harsh conditions to earn their bread in their chaotic country. They may not complain about this situation, but for us who see life in Bangladesh from the outside, life there seems quite challenging. Hopefully, our Bangladeshi and Indian friends will not blame us. We tried to convey what we saw, thereby providing examples. You can like the video and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.